There is a secret hidden for thousands of years. As the master of food and beverage of this place, he will reveal it to you. The world needs to know. His name is Paul Schenk. Hi, Mr. Kim. How are you? Good. Hi, I'm Paul Schenk. And I'm here to introduce you to the world's best kept secret. We're taking the lid off Korean food, better known in Korea as hanshik. I'm introducing you to bibimbap. Bibimbap simply means mixed rice. The rice has been soaked, so I'm going to go over and strain it. I put it through the strainer. Rice is everything in Korea. It's served with almost every dish imaginable. And this dish is a dish on its own. Getting the rice cooked properly is the key element. I've got my little cup, just an average cup. It's not particularly measured in any size. I'm going to fill that up with rice. One, two, and then we give exact equal amount of water. It looks good. So it's time to cook the rice. I'm using a different burner today. I'm not using my induction. So I've got my portable little gas burner. Put that on high. I'm going to cover it with a lid. Now it's time for the vegetables. This is one of the big components. Lots of vegetables to prepare. So come with me. All right, what do we need? A little of this touch of that. My God. Oh, barely lifted. Okay, my vegetables for today. All the vegetables will be cut in matchstick sizes. This is part of the beautiful presentation of bibimbap. I'll take off the head of the zucchini and then I'm going to cut it into matchstick sizes. So, I need a length so long and I'll take the end off. Okay, we're going to take the skin off. What I want to do is take the skin off in one sheet. That's all we're using. The inside we'll use for a soup or something else later. I'm going to try and get this as thin as I can. So I make a cut in the bottom and then I will peel around as thin as I can. Okay, I'm going to pass this over to Mr. Kim. Mr. Kim, come and show us how to do it without cutting a finger. Problem is, I don't know why, but I've got the shakes today. So any close-ups is not going to be good for me. Show us how to do it. Look how thin and perfect that is. We want to julienne the zucchini. Julienne means matchstick, very fine matchstick. Let's go. We'll do it like this. You can see, I'll take off the end of the carrot. Again, I'm after matchstick size. To make it fairer, I'll do like that. I will do it like that. There we go. See, same size now. Slice them thin, just going down. We flip it over and then slice it that way. And that gives us the magical matchsticks. And I'll show you the next step. Do the radish next. See the radishes in Korea are huge. Look at that. That's a whopper. I'm going to slice it through there. That's about right. Peel it off. All right, we'll slice that through. Lie them down because I want them perfect. There we have it, our matchstick radish. Okay, we've got here some soaked, gorgeous pyogo mushrooms. 
pyogo mushrooms they're called in Korea. I'm going to take out the hard bit. We'll take that out because it is very hard, sinewy, tough and uh, indigestible almost. I'm going to take off the bottom of the mushroom, the very bottom of it, and make sure I don't cut my hand doing it. Perfect. Then we're going to, oh, we've got to dry this. We've got to dry it out. That's right. Okay. So I put the mushroom there. We dry it out. Give it a good squeeze. And slice it up. Slice it thin. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful smell. I love the smell of these mushrooms. Very strong, pungent, aromatic smell. Next up is this ingredient called duraji. Duraji in English is bell flower root. This has already been salted, sliced and salted. Back in action. Okay, I'll slice the beef through. I'm going to do two types of beef here. Oh, I, need, I need the beef for two things. So first and most important is the julienne. The second one, I'm going to just chop finely or ground minced beef. And there's one province or town in Korea, Jeonju, where bibimbap comes from. I've been there, I've tried Jeonju bibimbap and it was delicious. Okay, my beef is julienne. I'm going to chop this piece that I have, the end piece slice it. I'll speed things up a little. I don't have to be so, have so much finesse for this one. It's just a matter of chopping it up. This minced beef for the topping. It's a spicy topping mixed with gochujang. It's called yak gochujang. Put the minced beef into that one. Put the julienne into that one. <laughs> beef I've got two forms the julienne and the minced okay I'll do the minced one first minced one first no I'll do the julienne first first thing that I need is a touch of sugar when I say a touch literally just a little I have pre-prepared chopped spring onion and I put a good scoop of that in there I'll leave that spoon I'll get myself some more spoons some soy sauce and a little bit of sesame oil into this mix. So soy sauce is next. That gives it good color, some nice flavor. Garlic, I'm going to put in a little bit. If you want to put in more into your recipe, you can. Some sesame seeds, a sprinkling, a little bit of black pepper, ground, and just to finish off, a dash of sesame oil. I give that a, a mix, and that's ready to be sautéed. We'll leave that marinate for five or ten minutes. Our next beef, actually, let me just check the rice first. The rice is behind me. Okay, the rice is looking pretty much perfect. So, the marinated beef I will leave here. The minced beef or ground beef for the yak gochujang, I'm going to make right now. So I've got myself a pan here. Okay, so I put in the vegetable oil, a touch, grab out my trusty chopsticks, a little bit of just a dash of sesame oil. We're ready to throw in the beef. In goes the beef. First thing is the gochujang. Gochujang is fermented bean paste that's mixed with dried chili powder. I put a good scoop in of the gochujang and I'll give that a mix. Mix that up, break it up, come on. Okay, to this, a few more ingredients need to go in there. A bit of garlic. Chop spring onions, 
to this we put in small amount of sugar just to take the edge off the gochujang give it a little bit of sweetness honey a drizzle of honey oh gorgeous look at that smells wonderful we add some water we'll cook this out and then I'm going to change this now this is looking great take that out beef is first in goes the marinated beef You can see there's a little bit of colour in there, that's good. Mushrooms next. Saute. We don't want too much colour. Oh, smells wonderful. Beautiful smell. Mushrooms, just magic. Pyogo mushrooms. Okay, I'll do the go study. I'll do this one. We don't mind a bit of colour in this. I just want to sauté it. Bellflower root that has been already sliced and uh, lightly salted. Touch of oil in there, not too much, just enough to coat it. Next pan, we will do the zucchini or squash as you may call it. I love cooking. I love it. This is the part that I love. You at home, do it step by step. Take your time. Zucchini's done. All right, the last two, a touch of oil once again. I'm going to put in the radish into this pan, carrot into this pan. Do we need a little bit of salt? Just a little bit? I already put these guys in salt. Look at that. Isn't it a monster? Actually, there's no salt in it. It's purely for show. All right, sauteing. Let's get back to action. We don't want too much color in either of these. So this is going to be quick. Keep the pan moving. Smells good. All right, I think we're pretty much right to go. Bibimbap is absolutely, absolutely the signature dish for Korea. Okay, we're ready to plate the dish. Mr. Kim, come on in. Take the red board away for me. Thank you. Clean that down. Okay. I've got my rice. Wow, look at that. It's holding nice. I'm going to put in this bowl a good scoop of the rice. Perfect for that. We simply put each ingredient around. Now, the ingredients don't have to be hot. The idea of this dish is that the rice is smoking hot and keeps hot. You put this around, try and separate them so you see the clear color difference. If you've got time and patience, you can line all of your ingredients up in the pot. We have yellow, orange, green. Of course, we've got the brown there. Beef is in next. If you don't like beef, you're vegetarian, for example, you can leave the egg out. You can leave the beef out. You can replace it with other ingredients. Egg white. I'm missing the gosari. I'll put a bit of that in, or the bracken, as it's called. Look at that. The topping, the yak gochujang, goes directly on top. Not too much of it. Wow. So you can see, come on in, Duncan, have a look. You can see the color of this dish. I'm going to show you how to eat it. You grab a spoon, it should be smoking hot. I can feel it, it's really hot from the rice. We're going to mix everything. I like it. Mix it up. And we're done. So healthy, gorgeous, colorful, vibrant.
Here we go. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's bibimbap. We have just uncovered another world's best kept culinary secret. This is bibimbap. I hope you love it as much as I do. Hi, I'm Paul Shank, and I'm here to introduce you to the world's best kept culinary secret. It's Korean food, better known here in Korea as Hanshik. And today we're going to be making Dolsot Bap. Dolsot is the pot, Bap is the rice. This is what the pot looks like, it has a wooden lid. It's made from solid granite, really super heavy, rock solid. This dates back to prehistoric history in the terms of cooking in Korea. So our dish today is focusing on this pot. I've got two types of rice. We've got chapsal, which is glutinous rice. That's the white one here. And we've also got non-glutinous rice, which is the clearer one. I've soaked them for 24 hours. You may ask, why have you soaked it for 24 hours? Soaking the rice for so long makes it much faster to cook. If you've taken it from the packet and maybe you've soaked it for 30 minutes, it will take a lot longer to cook. This takes a very quick time to cook. It's been soaking for 24 hours. This is my non-glutinous rice. This one is my glutinous rice. Now, the non-glutinous rice first. I drain that off. I'm gonna put in to this stone pop, the dull, the dull sot. Half a cup is more than enough. Here's the glutinous rice. I'll put that in to my stone pot, mix it up. To this, I will add one cup of water, put that into the pot. Next up, I'll prepare the ginkgo nuts. These are ginkgo nuts. Inside is this incredible little nut. And it's, it's funny, I mean, they call it a nut because it's got a shell, but it's actually more like a berry. It's very soft and chewy. Okay, so now I'll show you how to fry the ginkgo nuts. We put the pan on. I'll let the pan get hot. In the meantime, I'm gonna come over and peel the chestnuts. We've got some chestnuts, they're fresh. I take off the top. It's got a thick little head on it, so to be careful when you cut it. And the bottom. And all I'm after is the beautiful flesh that you can see in the middle there. That's what I'm after is the flesh. It's a beautiful nut, the chestnut, love it. Okay, ginkgo nuts, a little bit of oil in the pan. Just gonna saute this. Keep mixing and turning. Duncan, and have a look at the uh, color. Popping out of their jacket, just like the Incredible Hulk. I'm just gonna grab a small pot of water and I'll show you why. Okay, like roasted nuts I can smell. I'll put them on my cloth, cover that over, give them a rub, get some friction happening here. Look what's happened, look at the color of that. Like I said, incredible Hulk nuts. Pop that into the water and what happens is the skin or the shell floats. One more magic ingredient before we start cooking the rice is the black beans. I've got dried black beans that have been soaking for 24 hours. We'll put that in now. You can change it how you want to change it. The beauty about food and about cooking is that there is no rules. You can do what you want, you do what you like. That's what I like to say with food. Of course, there's traditional recipes, but you can mix it up. Ginkgo nuts, I'll put in, uh, there's about 12 in there or so. 
Okay, so it's time to turn on the heat. Get this pot on the go. Stone pot, dull sot. Directly on the fire. I put the lid on. This is going to boil. It will boil for five minutes. I'll turn it down, and then we have a couple of secret ingredients to add. So uh, I've got to duck off to the fridge and get those secrets. All right, where's my trusty ingredients? You know, I can't go anywhere without there being a camera. That's cool. Camera in the fridge, fridge cam. Okay, I've got the secret ingredient. Let's see if you know what that is. This is ginseng, better known in Korea as, in general, ginseng is known as in, in sum. So I take off the head right at the top. I'm simply going to slice it on the angle. We'll put some slithers, one, two, three, four. I also have the Korean dates, better known as jujube. I'm going to use these whole and pine nuts or pine seeds. Just a handful of pine nuts will go in as well. Okay, for the seasoning sauce, I need soy sauce, which I have here. Put some soy into my bowl. I've got some crushed or finely chopped spring onion. We'll put that in, all of that. Some crushed garlic. One spoon of crushed garlic. If you like garlic more, you can put in a little bit more. Gochugaru, ground dried chili peppers. Put in half a teaspoon. If you like it more spicy, you can put in more. And again, it depends on the strength of your gochugaru or your dried chili powder. Black pepper, just a touch, touch of black pepper. Sesame seeds, I'll put in one scoop. A little bit of sesame oil to finish. And that's our seasoning sauce. We'll give that a mix. And this is served on the side of the dolsot pup. And the idea of that is you can mix in as much or as little as you like to add the flavoring. Okay, got a clean bowl to put that into. We'll put it into my bowl. You can see the chili flakes in it. We're looking good. How's our rice? Oh yeah, look at that. We'll just take the lid off a little. Turn it right down. Now I will put in the jujube, the ginseng, and the pine nuts. Ginseng, four pieces. Stick it in there. Let the flavor infuse into the rice. Okay, the jujube goes in, whole dried jujube. In it goes. Pine nuts on top. Oh, that looks so healthy. Really delicious. We cover that again to keep in all those flavors and we make sure that we've got it on a very low heat. It's the lowest heat possible. There's enough heat in that pot now to really finish cooking it. This is the Dolsot Grabber. We're going to take out... Come on in, Duncan, have a look. Come and check it out. Okay, we've got the Dolsot on the go. We're ready. We'll take off the lid. Look at that. Wow. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's the dolsot bup in the beautiful wooden tray. You can mix it up. You can put in there what you like. So we have just uncovered, literally, one of the world's best kept culinary secrets. This is dolsot bup. You've got the seasoning sauce on the side for flavor. I simply mix that in with the rice, or I take a scoop of rice, put a bit of this on top and eat it gorgeous. Traditionally, after you finish this dish, the rice will be stuck to the stone pot. They fill it full of, it's like a roasted flavor. They then fill it full of water, not full, but up to that level with water. And then it's served kind of like a dessert called nurongji.